Hey guys, Nick Heron here with the Fantasy Football Swagger Show. And guys, I get asked almost every single day, by somebody at least, who are some players that I should be targeting late in my draft that can give me great value? Who are some sleepers that I should be targeting, basically is what they're looking for. So what I've got for you on today's list, guys, is a top five list of the players that I'm personally targeting at the wide receiver position. Guys who I think are going quite a bit lower than they probably should be. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean you should reach on them five rounds before what their average draft position is or anything like that. But when you get down to this range that these guys are getting drafted in, I tend to like these guys quite a bit more than the other players that are going around. Around them. So what we're going to do today is talk about five of these guys who play a wide receiver and we're going to go from the average draft position, the highest average draft position down to the lowest average draft position. So uh, the guys at the very bottom are the guys that I guess I would consider to be more sleepers than uh, the guys toward the top who probably will be drafted in every single draft. But maybe you're just being forgotten about for some reason and, and neglected, I guess, is more of what I'm looking to say. So let's start things off here, guys. Uh, the first person on this list is Alan Robinson of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, Allen Robinson's currently going in about the middle of the sixth round. He's going 27th among wide receivers. Now, that's okay. I don't think that's necessarily horrible. I mean, I can understand why people would be a little bit worried about this whole situation in Jacksonville. Blake Bortles looked horrible, like all-time bad last year. But all reports are that Blake Bortles is playing significantly better this year. And Allen Robinson seems to be the guy who is taking the ball and running, figuratively speaking. He's the guy who's catching passes from Blake Bortles and, and really looking good in both OTAs, uh, in the preseason, all this type of stuff. Allen Robinson appears to be the guy. He's also one of the only guys on the roster who's been healthy. That's a, a pass catcher. So that's always a good thing as well. With Julius Thomas out for probably the first three, four, five weeks of the season, who, is, who else is going to catch the ball? Allen Robinson was getting targeted very, very often this past season at, with Blake Bortles as a rookie, and I don't think there's any reason to think that's going to change once Blake Bortles is now in his second year and Allen Robinson again is healthy. So I'm a big fan of him where he's currently going. I think I would take him as high as the early fifth round, depending on the format of my league. I think in PPR leagues, he's going to be worth more. If you're in a touchdown heavy league, Jaguars suck. I mean, that's just the honest truth. So the probability of him getting double-digit touchdowns isn't very high, but it is possible that he can get, you know, 80 to 90 catches this year, and that could be very, very valuable. He's a guy who could get 1,000 to 1,200 yards receiving this year, which could give you some great value along with, you know, five to seven touchdowns or so. So I think uh, given the fact that he's going in the sixth round in 12-team drafts, that's a pretty good value for Allen Robinson. Moving down the list, we have Smokey John Brown. Uh, this is a guy who I, I'm kind of surprised is not being more hyped right now. Um, he had a big rookie year. Granted, in fairness, he was you know lower on the list of rookies just because so many rookie wide receivers broke out this past year. But John Brown's in a really good situation. I mean, this is a guy who was performing decently well even with the horrible quarterback situation that they had there in Arizona last year. When Carson Palmer is on the field, this offense is substantially better than they were before. We've got Michael Floyd injured right now. Larry Fitzgerald's getting older, and John Brown also spent the offseason living with Carson Palmer. Doesn't get much better than that from a fantasy standpoint. So you've got to like that John Brown is definitely somebody who is going to be in the back of Carson Palmer's mind. And anytime he's on the field, he's going to say, hey, Carson, give me the ball, man. He, you should give me the ball. And that should mean more targets for John Brown this season. He's currently going in the seventh round. Seven, uh, fourth pick of the seventh round is his average draft position, which puts him 32nd at wide receiver. I like him a lot more than that, to be honest with you. I think this guy could lead the Cardinals in receptions, yardage, and touchdowns this year, potentially. So I think he's definitely somebody who should be on your fantasy radar and somebody who, again, can definitely help you out in some of those PPR leagues. Next guy on the list that we have is another PPR person. This is a guy who I think is going vastly underdrafted right now, and that is Eddie Royal. Now, Eddie Royal heads over to the Chicago Bears. This is his first year there, so I understand he doesn't really have too much of a relationship with Jay Cutler, and that could be an issue. Obviously, it really could. But Eddie Royal is going in the ninth round of fantasy drafts right now. I mean, he's going 39th among wide receivers. Unless he gets injured, I can almost guarantee you that he's going to outperform that. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily that, El that Eddie Royal is going to be the number one wide receiver in Chicago. It doesn't mean that he's going to get 10 touchdowns or even 1,000 yards. But what he does for you in a PPR league is he creates consistent performances. He's a, he's a guy who can get you... 
five, six, seven catches a week and give you 70 to 80 yards on top of that, in, in addition to you know your occasional touchdown. We've seen Eddie Royal have some big games, particularly in the beginning of seasons for some reason. See if that continues in Chicago. I, I think that's kind of an, an aberration versus being something that you can really look at as being consistent. But hey, if it's happened many, many times before like it has, maybe there's something to it. I don't know, maybe he just gets tired toward the end of the year. But the bottom line is that Eddie Royal is really the only healthy wide receiver on this team right now that has any sort of track record whatsoever. Alshon Jeffrey is injured. Granted, we might see him back there in week one. It's looking probable that he's going to play in week one. But is he going to be at 100%? Probably not. And Eddie Royal is going to be at 100%. So we definitely like to see that. Kevin White being gone, I mean, it, it only helps Eddie Royal. I understand that it's not good for the Chicago offense as a whole. But if you're looking at Eddie Royal, it definitely helps him. So I think Eddie Royal going as late as he is right now. He's going 39th again among wide receivers. And that is just way too low. It's just my opinion. It's just way too low. Next guy on the list is a guy who is a physical beast and somebody who went undrafted in the NFL draft but could potentially put decent fantasy numbers up this year, and that is Brandon Coleman of the New Orleans Saints. This guy is six foot six, which makes him, as far as I understand it, he's the biggest wide receiver in the NFL right now in terms of height. We've seen a lot of these big, tall, physical receivers come out lately and have big fantasy seasons, so I don't think there's a whole lot of surprise this year if Brandon Coleman steps in in a New Orleans Saints offense that needs more targets, they need more players who they can throw the ball to, and if he has a big year this year, I don't think that would be surprising at all. Mark, we saw Marcus Colston years ago kind of fit in in the role that I'm almost expecting Brandon Coleman to take over here in the next couple of years, and there's not really any reason to believe that Brandon Coleman couldn't potentially potentially take over in that role this year for the Saints. And if he does that, if he's out there as a regular starter, or at least out there, you know, for 50% of the plays for the Saints, this is a guy who could put up huge numbers this year. Jimmy Graham is gone, so they lost their biggest red zone target. Marcus Colston's older, so I mean, we can't really rely on him too much. Ben Watson and, and Josh Hill and these various guys that they have here in the receiving game. There's not really anything special aside from Brandon Cooks, so it would be nice to see another player develop, and Brandon Coleman seems to be a guy who could potentially do that. Brandon Coleman's currently going in the 12th round, end of the 12th round, 56th among wide receivers, which means he's going undrafted in a lot of leagues, and I think that's pretty criminal. I think this guy has some serious potential here, and he's definitely somebody who at the end of your draft, you take a chance on. Rather than drafting a guy who you know is just gonna give you okay production, really nothing special, this is a guy who could potentially be a game winner for you from from time to time. So I'm looking at Brandon Coleman as a guy who I'm like liking, especially in your dynasty leagues, late in drafts, and I think that he could potentially put up some good numbers this year and on into the future as well, along with Drew Brees being at the quarterback position. I mean, that's just a, a great combo there. If you got Brandon Cooks on one side, Brandon Coleman on the other, Drew Brees in the middle, that's going to be a good combo, I think, for years to come. Last on the list, guys, is Cody Latimer of the Denver Broncos. Now, this is a second-year wide receiver who really didn't do much as a rookie. He was a little bit disappointing, but in fairness, Denver did have other wide receivers that have been, you know, they've been in the league and they've been productive for years now, so there wasn't really a whole lot of room for Cody Latimer to step in and really do much, but he is expected, based on what we've seen so far in the preseason and what we've heard in camp, to be the third wide receiver for the Denver Broncos. Now, that does not mean that necessarily that he's going to play in the slot. What's expected to happen here is that Demarius Thomas is going to stay on the outside. And then in your two wide receiver sets, you'd have Emmanuel Sanders and Demarius Thomas on the field. And when they go to three wide receivers, which is pretty often for the Broncos, despite the fact that they're going to run, they're still going to be in three wide receiver sets very often. Trust me, it's going to happen. Um, but what's expected to happen in three wide receiver sets is that Emmanuel Sanders will kick to the inside, play the slot. Cody Latimer will go to the outside. So what's going to happen there, obviously, is that you're going to see still that Emmanuel Sanders and Demarius Thomas are the main targets, but that could leave open plenty of opportunities for your boy Cody Latimer on the outside. Cody Latimer is a guy who, uh, I mean, the team has a lot of hopes for. They drafted him, obviously, high in the draft. I think it was the second round, if I remember correctly. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, but I believe it was a second round NFL draft pick so this team obviously has some sort of faith in him they want to get him on the field they want to prove that that draft pick wasn't a complete bust so I fully expect that Cody Latimer is going to spend plenty of time on the field this year and with Peyton Manning throwing the ball to him yeah 
he's going to put up some decent numbers, especially for a guy going in the 13th round of fantasy drafts right now. This is 12 team fantasy drafts. He's going 58th among wide receivers. I can almost guarantee you that he's going to outperform that average draft position. So he's definitely somebody that I'm looking for. Again, mostly in your deeper leagues or your keeper leagues. But at the same time, though, he could be somebody that could help you out in your in your regular redraft leagues, even in 12-team leagues this season. So uh, that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Hey, do me a favor. Follow me over on Twitter, at ClickWithTV, if you guys would. That's the best way to get in contact with me. And if you have any questions, make sure you tweet those at me again, at ClickWithTV. Or, of course, you can leave them in the comment section below on this YouTube video. I'd be glad to answer them for you. Thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to hit that like button if you did. And, of course, do me a favor again. Subscribe to this channel if you would. It's the best way for me to grow this channel. It's the best way for me to continue to give you guys the best fantasy advice that I can here on this channel. So thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll talk to you next time here on the Fantasy Football Swagger Show.